Hello guys, sorry for being late, I'm glad to see the core of the community here, nine people, that's what we have been from the very beginning. So, um, will I be able to see some live chat if it will appear? No? Ah, okay, comments. Okay, so I have also the community managers here. So if you have something, just uh, if some quality is not right or anything, or I meet some question, just send it a te telegram. They are monitoring it, right? You are monitoring. Okay. They are monitoring. Uh, okay, so I will, before I will answer the questions, I will start with some, um, uh, with some of the technology context that will uh, help to get a context of the answers better. Uh, first of all, we are working currently on the Ethereum blockchain. As you all know, the Ethereum blockchain has its limitations. It takes time to send money. We need to have some alien currency to pay for gas and try to explain it to an average book buyer. It's slow, and uh, the public ambition generally is not compatible with the current or expected state of Ethereum blockchain in the coming year. So we have to figure out if we want for the project to have a, to have a life as such, how can we make the transactions within Publica for purchasing the books free and instant? Mm -hmm. Second question is, how can we bypass the walls of App Store, specifically iOS, Apple? There is no currently issues in Play Store, but possibly they will appear once we get traction adoption that uh, who is there, some crypto, strange stuff. So we kick them out. So third probably problems that is currently is more or less uh, overcame, overcome, has been overcome, is payments. How do you imagine a mass adoption with crypto payments, with people buying PBL somewhere? We have been, we have delivered, a, how to say, not a proof of concept, I mean, there was proof of concept for public as some like a month after I said, but we have delivered something that works, that uh, sparks interest, that has a community, but it has a very specific ceiling for any meaningful further growth. That's acceptance of fiat currency, that's uh, bypassing uh, the problems in uh, app stores, and the costs and time of blockchain. So there are three major solutions. I didn't have these particular questions in AMA, and for me, these are the primary ones. If we cannot answer them, there is a little point to continue. Three people dropped. <laughs> Let's see if we'll get any luck. Further, and thanks for staying. So the first thing, Public solution for slow and costly blockchain is to work on our own blockchain. Currently, we have been experimenting with Ethereum fork called Quorum, JP Morgan. It works. It's not decentralized. Do we need uh, absolute decentralization? Even blockchains like EOS, no, no. We also have been exploring EOS. It wouldn't work for us. So a viable solution is our own permission blockchain that will handle up to, we have been testing like up to 15,000 transactions per second and will be enough decentralized. It will run in containers, anybody can run it. Library, uh, independent authors, alliance, well, public and naturally, maybe some community members. It's proof of authority, you don't need to burn anything. Second thing, so we, we can potentially, I mean, there are some consequences here, but we potentially will solve the issue of slow and expensive blockchain. Second thing is App Store. 
Many people do not know that in App Store you may only talk about like some nine or sixteen currencies, like Bitcoin. So you can send them. And if you want more, no, your application will be blocked. They, it will not pass review. And naturally, PBL is not there. Ethereum is there, of course, but not PBL or other thousands of coins. So we had hard time in uh, approving our application. The only thing we could kind of win that we can send book tokens as books, so to speak. And 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 for Apple, it's still kind of very gray area because it's crypto asset and, and they have the list of crypto assets that they allow to to handle within their apps. How can we bypass that? Progressive web apps. They have up to 50 megabytes storage currently in Safari. Android is much more generous because Google is pushing this technology further. We're investigating what would it take to have an e-reader in React and what would it mean in terms of security of your private key because our e-reader is coupled with wallet and we need local storage to store something persistently. Uh, it's definitely, well, e-reader, it probably will work. Uh, private key security, it's, it's, it's like I don't need the research to understand that it will be not secure. I mean, that, that's why the only thing you can really store there, it's like a few dozens of books. That probably not so interesting to be like stolen. And anyway, somebody has to gain access to your local storage, uh, browser local storage. So not, not so easy as well. But uh, progressive web app give us a kind of a light in the end of the tunnel, because without this, uh, public also doesn't have a chance for kind of really mass adoption. Apple users will not be able to use um, kind of normal features. So first thing, public a blockchain, second is progressive web app, and first has been already demonstrated, we can set it up, we can make it work. Um, second progressive web app, we have uh, progressive web app experience, a site building service workers working with local storage for e-commerce sites. So we are researching right now and people are working on the public solution. Third is payment. There was a question like, what about in-app purchases? Um, oh, for, first of all, if you are dealing with Apple, they only accept you to integrate uh, Apple Pay, so App Store payment. Well, they charge something for it, but that's not the biggest problem. The biggest problem is that they uh, will not tolerate using their payment method for cryptocurrency. And they do not allow you to have an external payment gateway. So there are many, Apple specific complications there. Uh, and uh, yeah, solution for Apple is progressive web app and solution for payment as such is uh, taking a step forward and integrating uh, fiat payment gateway with uh, on the fly conversion into PBL. I will, I have this question, I, I will uh, share the diagram uh, that is explaining how does uh, Fiat Gateway uh, works. I will just forward it. Uh, well, okay, I'll forward to later to the computer where, from where I'm presenting. So before going to the specific questions, I, I think it's 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 how many are we? Twelve. Great, great, twelve. So it, it's it's worthwhile to mention this. Uh, kind of three, I think like three whales that are either kind of taking public a down, you know, or if we fix them, we can really stand on top of them and grow. So the first one is a blockchain and we have to make it free and instant. Second one is app store restrictions for payment methods for crypto and progressive web app can fix it. And third is payments. I mean. We cannot ask people for mass adoption to go and figure out where to buy PBL tokens. I mean, it would be nice if everyone would buy them, but probably <laughs> that's a pass which will not lead us anywhere. So, solution for this is fiat payment integration with a on-the-fly exchange. Not an easy thing. You have to have a license. 
license as a service or cooperating exchange. And you have to buy on the fly also uh, some ether to calculate gas and calculate all the fees for exchange for the payment provider to calculate the correct amount to capture. But we are over that, so it's already live, but there are some neat details I will touch upon. So these three whales, blockchain, progressive web app, and fiat payment gateway with an on the fly conversion to crypto. These are the three questions in my personal AMA that I am uh, working towards uh, finding or building a solution. And uh, please ask some questions in Telegram about that. Meanwhile, I will go to the questions submitted by the community. Yeah, sorry, I, I have to also describe one problem that stems from the fact that we have public blockchain. So what happens with the token? Uh, we call it side chain currently, side chain. So we think that there could be a, 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 a blockchain, a permissioned blockchain, side chain for public, that handles book transfers and book purchases. But all, how to say, large scale settlements are happening in Ethereum blockchain. For example, we are getting fiat from customers. We are handling the transactions on the side chain. However, the payout of the author can only happen in public tokens. Uh, it introduces additional complexity because now we have a theory, we have PBL token, and in this side chain, we will have also what's called pub currency and book tokens. Uh, another option is to have this new side chain listed or having a own exchange for that because we uh, have a partner with the license. Or, well, we can service ourselves in neighboring country in Estonia. And uh, just have this new blockchain uh, being available as exchange. As it's a theorem fork, it's considered to be secure and uh, not as cumbersome as invented blockchain. It's a blockchain um, supported by JP Morgan built for institutions. And we have been like testing it over to, to, to see that it's instant and free and yeah, we know how to manage it. But so there are these three important things, blockchain, progressive web app, and fiat payment gateway with instant conversion to crypto because I mean, under the hood we all work with, with crypto and with the blockchain, not fiat. Uh, but it introduces an additional complexity in uh, tokenomics. Okay, so let's move to the questions of the community. The, what is this? Uh, so the question from Gianluca, the state of the technical team, who is working and who has left? So let's start with the core, Yuri who is a project founder, the originator of the idea, is a project CTO. So we, I mean, the project already has been founded by a guy with a, I don't know, 20 plus years in, in, in development. Then that's me. I'm solution architect and product uh, owner for, for the project. And then we used to have a large team of nine people I'm just reading from my notes from yesterday. That has been decreased after they launched eReader, Wallet, and Book Cloud and Book ICO platform. So currently, there are three areas. Each has a developer. Uh, it's Fiat Gateway, and it's uh, backend things and frontend. Just to give an idea of backend things, we have to set up Ethereum nodes to broadcast transactions uh, to the blockchain. This nodes at ETH get ETH gas. They're not stable. They're breaking. So, so ICL platform could just kind of freeze any moment. So what we have to do is to figure out a procedure to provide like high availability for them. So at in a given moment we have two of them because we know that some of them will fail. <laughs> so when it fails, 
we have a script that uh, spawns it again, setting up all the software and all the blockchain files. So that's the back end. For the front end, then you know, okay, it's ICO platform, book ICO platform, book upload, setting up your smart contract uh, through the web interface and so on. And Fiat Gateway, you'll see it was pretty complex, so there was a separate developer for it. And uh, the question is about some small fixes. We do fix some fixes, some errors. We do not fix, uh, we do not improve a lot uh, like UX, like iPad app, for example. Uh, because the bottleneck is not having, not having iPad app, is uh, accepting fiat or not accepting fiat. And uh, charging people gas or not charging people gas. And having a full application in iOS or not. So we, our say UX issues in reader, they're not really like a blocking us from being number one in book sales. Okay, so state of the technical team. It is there, it can scale if we need to, because as, as such, uh, we are within uh, Scandi Web Walls, it has almost 200 people, so we can scale. Like we, we're just getting all kind of components we need. In a purchases, Barry, Nicholas, and Casper, have you considered the possibility of in a purchases to enable users to buy PPL and fund book ICOs? In <laughs> yeah. I already mentioned that like this a a Apple has a restriction. So if you just Google allowed list of cryptocurrencies uh, for, for Apple, you'll see it. And we had like numerous rejections by, by their team, uh, even like, like mentioning their PBL. And in a purchases for crypto, so I mean, I wish we could have, but we just cannot. Are you adding periodicals in comics? That would be great. Uh, we can technically add them, but uh, for the reasons outlined above, it will not move the so to speak, like the needle for public. Okay, we have 100 more comics, like, will we get really whatever hockey stick grows for that? People just come, okay, I need to be, okay, I need to go to an exchange. I need to buy this crypto. And like recently, this crypto wasn't really like a very exciting thing to engage in. <laughs> I cannot read a book when I'm offline. That's annoying, I think the reform is the future. Well, generally, so apparently, uh, you use certain device operation system that is not supporting some features, like some functions by using. We are not fixing this because generally it works like whatever with 80, 90% of the population. And if we fix for the rest 10, we will have maybe two more readers. And we'll spend like the amount of time that is, is not reasonable. Um, bum, 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 bum. Hi, I have my book listed in your store, but I would like to make it available through the website. How do I do it? Thanks. Well, generally, just like in Amazon, just put our logo there and link to the page with your book, then. There is no embed code. You cannot uh, check out within your site. You will be redirected to public. Eric is asking, do you consider making PBL token a revenue generating one, or PBL will be forever utility token? So currently, we're not considering any more or less utilities for PBL tokens. Currently, it's a means of payment for products available in public or reader wallet app. Authors receive PBLs for their books and then either cash them out to the exchange, like some already did, or can use for payments to their service providers. For example, Jet Launch, their book packagers, they told several times, we're accepting PBL as a means of payment. Book package, packaging. Yeah. So we, there was also in this, or a revenue generating one, yeah. So the, the token, utility stays current as, as it has been. There could be some changes driven by the side chain. We will see how we can, uh, how we can reduce the complexity or how we can at least handle that. Because without having a side chain, waiting for Ethereum to have Plasma or something that will help it to scale, maybe not the best part of the roadmap, as our developers told, HDD, hope-driven development. Probably there is uh, very little hope currently. 
for the scalability. So we have been exploring Kios, but um, yeah, we can use it, but it will not work for public as we want it to work. It will not be free. Um, bum, 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 bum. In order to be more transparent and accountable with readers while helping both reliable authors and token holders, do you think creating a smart contract that releases funds received in book ICO at certain milestones is a good idea? So basically, the question is, okay, author makes a book ICO, gets all the money, and then the book is kind of not good. So let's release money gradually. At least there's at least some when they publish like three first chapters. Uh, we do not enforce a specific business model. We can provide it because some authors will uh, generally think just exactly the person who has asked that to 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 have to be more how to say more 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 uh, more attractive, more attractive for their readers. They just okay, you know, guys, we do not need all the money right now. We just you know finish thirty percent of the books and release the money. We just make some time logs. The same as like public. Uh, team has logged the funds for five years. If they want to have a write a book you know, within five years, maybe they just can do fine log. Um, I mean, of course, it involves something that, OK, if, if something is not delivered, then this money somehow should be claimed back by the community. So it involves certain complexity. We do not have it because we don't believe that it will, again, be critical for, for readers and authors that we will have, like, that there are 1,000 authors out there who are just waiting for this particular feature. Oh, we had two people. It's me and you, right? No? Or oh, we have some external uh, viewers. We had five and then we dropped to, five, to two. Can you please summarize the incentives for readers to participate to an ICO? If a percentage of a future sales is not part of it, please explain. Why is it sounds like a basic requirement? Um, what you mentioned it is, is it classical? Oh, now it's one. So it's exactly. But I will continue anyway. So we have a, we have a recording, right? Yep. Okay. <laughs> so what you described is a, is a classical security token, right? So you are like so a book like a book uh, has an equity. Basically, you own the book, and then you purchase a fraction, of it. and uh, you are getting either well, profits or revenues. But that's not what we ever have planned for uh, book ICO. So the incentives are helping you uh, to purchase your own early copy, thus enabling your favorite author to release it, or maybe an aspiring individual whom you want to support. And uh, we have a current uh, case going on where public is not just to crowdfund, but it's it provides exclusive access to the book. So the book will be published on Amazon in, uh, like, say, in March, and it will be available only on public platform in February. So different authors can use it differently. How much funding is left? Mems, Ko, Gianluca, Ichinois, 85, asking. Uh, actually, we uh, I have a table. Is it page two? I have a table from Andrew. So I will I will share it now. Uh, so just to make some sum up, we have received three thousand around three thousand uh, ethers and maybe six bitcoins that. Uh, we're representing 1,025,000 back then in November. And then crypto market has grew dramatically. So it has been like up to, I think we moved half to Bitcoin. So it didn't grow like five times like Ether, but we had something like 3 million. <coughs> um, however, it's not as easy to use it. So where we had to pay in uh, crypto, it was easy. You just paid. And all the fiat expenses, if you send it from exchange, the bank bounces. So we cannot pay for services. We cannot pay convert money to pay for uh, like conferences, flights, accommodation, printing of materials. We cannot pay for developers, designers, marketing guys. 
So we have been looking for a way how to move them to fiat. And then eventually we did. The price was not 15,000 for Bitcoin and 1,000 for it or anymore. Okay, meanwhile, I will just narrate uh, some of the numbers. So by December, uh, I mean, by this December, the value of funds is a bit below million. I mean, the value of funds we have received during ICO. So what we have been spending them, platform development, slightly less than half million. Salaries of executive team, executive part-time, like me working part-time, uh, chief financial officer part-time, designers on demand, we never like hard full-time designer, marketing team, community managers, that a bit more than uh, 200,000. And there is also some amounts we have been paying in pebbles from treasury. So we do not account them naturally because they are kind of free to us uh, because public treasury has been planned. Crypto exchanges. That's heavy. That's heavy. And to move money into regulated, audited institution, crypto money, to, to manage it like fiat, it's also substantial expense. So the total amount is $177,000. Public com domain. We're very excited and signed the contracts and so maybe not, but it's not okay. Maybe you want to go to court, so $88,000. Legal expenses, company incorporation, ICO, KYC, ML, expensive lawyers during ICO time, $67,000. External marketing, promotional costs, slightly more than $100,000. Advisors, well, actually, we'll just send it to Telegram or, yeah, so we'll just share it. The problem about, okay. Anyway. Advisors and communities, 58,000. A lot has been paid also in PBL. YouTubers, video releases, podcasts, 62,000. Uh, servers, AWS, public is built on microservices. Each microservice is a separate instance, so it accumulates to some up to 1,000 per month, plus uh, set up 16.5 thousand. Conferences, participation fees, transport accommodation, pro materials, design, print, delivery, 78 thousand. Financial accounting advice. Just we also have to provide profit and loss statements, balance sheets, and so on. So our total expenses in fiat, they are around 1,381,000. So 1.3, 1.4 millions. And public balance. So we still have like around 120,000 on our account, uh, plus some crypto leftovers. And we have outstanding bill for about uh, not settled, about four. Well, generally we didn't, I mean, Scandia was just kind of providing the service and just waiting till public will convert crypto to fiat. So generally public is at minus around 200,000. So what was the original question? How much funding is left? Um, some funding is still inserted bitcoins. And good this we are Bitcoin. So this we are ethers, we have been like already done. So if Bitcoin jumps eventually to ten thousand, twenty thousand, we have a lot of funding. If it stays the same, we have a debt. Um, we will send the spreadsheet with the numbers I have uh, read uh, to Telegram and uh, put it in into the overall AMA. Uh, file with a video and, and documents. Um, I mean, as, as Scandiweb and me are, I mean, I'm founder of Scandiweb and I'm co founder of Public, and we decided to do it not just because we had funding, but we just wanted to do it. So we're just continuing to want to do it, and we can afford to do it. 
So we will continue to support it and develop further because I mean there's nothing really to support to wait for some miracle, right? We have to be quite radical in what we are doing to the platform. Uh, to the project, uh, however, at slower pace. So probably will not like scale up eventually to 12 people until we get uh, maybe external funding uh, into equity. But we are not really like eager to have it right now. We rather finish uh, plan development that will help to scale and and uh, and then we we see for, for 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 real whether this technology is disruptive enough for the people to start using it in mass because they will be able to to use it in a conventional manner using uh, conventional apps paying conventionally and having a conventional speed and cost of the book book delivery, right? They don't want to pay extra. Variable extra depending on gas fees. Okay. <laughs> Funding done. Yeah, there was also a question or mentions about 13 million tokens from treasuries that we have been selling. Uh, some of these tokens were used to pay community managers, some to fund partnerships. None of this was used, was, was sold on the exchange to fund our team direct costs. So we have not been selling any of our, our tokens. <laughs> How long do you think public can run without any further round of funding? Yeah, public can run. The question is, what is public? What do you mean will run? If you talk about a domain name, public and website, it can continue probably for a lot of years ahead without any funding running. But you probably mean public that grows and wins a market share. For this, we need a modest amount of developers and marketing personnel to onboard new authors, publishers, finish sidechain or on-chain, progressive web app, um, fiat gateway that works, but make sure it works for more people with more ease. And then we can be a really kind of a threat for status quo, because we can, eventually we will be able to function in mass and at speed and scale. Now we are a great story. Uh, people like it, authors like it, communities like it, authors group like it. We got awards we never expected to get. We got partnerships uh, we didn't expect to get either that work. But we have to bring it to the level where actually not just connoisseurs can kind of enjoy the clever concept, but anybody can take advantage of it. Yeah. So we, we have a plan, say, from six to 12 months that uh, we continue to do our public. Uh, what is the company's strategy to fund the marketing campaign that will be needed to gain visibility and build a user base? What do you see as a marketing campaign for public? Billboards, pay-per-click, TV show, participation in all kinds of conference worldwide. I think if we will grow, we'll grow fast and organically, and many people will use public growth to boost their names, thus boosting ours. Because currently we are unique, and we are special enough, and we have a working product. It has already been used to fund uh, books through crypto crowdfunding, so to speak. And once we can be scalable, we need much less marketing, because we are one of a kind. I mean, I don't remember Google really like marketing themselves. Yeah, marketing campaign. And, and don't, don't feel like, just, just think about some successful, uh, Crypto projects that were really, really unique. How they were marketing themselves. Uh, we, we, we want to build something unique. I think then we either have enough funding to do whatever marketing campaign is necessary, 
or we just have an organic growth. I do not believe in anything that needs a lot of investment for scale. Well, there are some cases, I mean, Airbnb have spent lots of money for marketing. Wish, they have a few billion revenue in for e-commerce stuff. Some spontaneous shopping, wish.com. They have been spending a lot. But, uh, I mean, uh, they have not been spending it also from internal resources or some kind of crowdfunding. So apparently their business model was enough interesting for investors uh, to fund it. And we are open for this as well. <laughs> so currently we do not see the funding uh, for huge marketing campaign as a bottleneck for public assets. <laughs> How is the public financial situation? Do you have enough funds to keep the project running? You have said many times you have more than enough funds, but 7 million tokens have exited your wallet over the month and have probably been sold. Few words about this topic could help us better understand since many projects now in financial constraints. Well, first of all, none of the tokens have been sold again. I don't, you didn't link to any transaction for 7 million tokens as well. So I don't know what you are referring to. Uh, The team funds are frozen for five years. We didn't even unfreeze our first batch due to liquidity on the market. I mean, we can have them, but we cannot sell them. Neither we can really give to do it. So uh, financial situation is uh, summarized that we have spent uh, the funds we have received. There's also a summary of how these have been spent. It doesn't stop our development or design or communication marketing efforts. And we have a major, like, three component plan to, to give public a chance of being a mass product on blockchain, progressive web app, and field gateway. Gianluca and Gianna and Plasma asking, could you tell us what are the obstacles in building a fiat gateway? I am asking from a general point of view, like, it is difficult because we need to understand how will the VAT work, given that people from everywhere will buy. I'm obviously not asking to break NDA, but I'm interested in what are the main problems to solve before launching it. Answer is show diagram. Did we figure out how to share the screen? No? Share the document. Yeah, document. yeah so okay, I, I will also share the diagram. I will show the share the diagram. But let, let, let me just narrate it. What happens under the hood of field? Of the gateway. Um, okay. So we have a partner, uh, a partner that has an exchange license allowing them to manage fiat and crypto. So to set up the system, we sent public assents, ether, ether, like why? Because we need it for gas to move book tokens and pebbles. Uh, we need a fund. We sent funds to the exchange to their wallet, and we also sent price updates. What is the current PBL price? So what happens for the user? Credit card data is entered in the public um, store, so to speak. And then user ID is acquired to the exchange to verify its limit. <clears throat> well, user ID, credit card details. <laughs> because we do not want uh, natural I mean, exchange, crypto, KYC, AML. Do we want to ask our people to upload their passport copies? No. Yeah, so we tell, okay, be below 450 per year, you just do whatever, it's automated registration, you don't even know that you do something with exchange. Yes, it stays it stated in terms and condition, but not anybody, yeah, zero. <laughs> uh, but it's not uh, something that you even aware of. But we have to keep track of it. So we uh, query to verify its limit. If purchase limit is not reached, we proceed further Else we tell, well, please, you know, go and register, Mr. Trader, because apparently you are trading the books or 
at least your credit card has been already used for more than anonymous limit allows. Okay, user is presented with a total funds amount to be captured if user wishes to pay with credit card. So it will include exchange fees, acquirer fee, and enter for guess. So credit card data, once we captured it, is passed to the acquirer. Currently, we are using CC Bill. If you have been in the industry, you know them for servicing adult sites, mostly maybe casinos as well. Uh, because we have tried about a dozen acquirers and it's all crypto. I see. You. No. And sometimes, yes, but we know that it will not succeed because they are kind of from gray jurisdictions. So, none of the normal banks will ever allow them to charge the cards of their customers. So, funds amount that we charge is equal to PBL value of purchase, uh, because yes, they need PBLs, right, to buy books. So we calculate, okay, to buy this amount of PBLs, we need this amount of dollars. We convert it at the rate set by Publica. This rate is variable, so it means that if PBL goes up, then sometimes to buy a book, we need just one, another time it is 100 PBLs for the books that cost the same $10. Then ETH value necessary for guess. So also user has to pay for that. Also converted the rate that we say because we operate kind of our own exchange for this. Plus acquire fees for the amount. I mean the guys who deal with these tricky crypto guys like us, they want a substantial percentage from the purchase. And also exchange fees. They're not giving us their license as a gift. So when we have calculated all this on the fly, we're actually charging and funds are captured and credited to the exchange bank account. Yeah, so the exchange bank account is funded through all these steps. What happens next? Acquirer sends capture successful message to Publica. Publica sends user data and exchange request to the, uh, to the exchange. And we also have a data package uh, to, to, to be sent, to be used. So we have to know the user email address and as a unique ID, amount, currency, buy order for PBL, how many PBL we need, buy order for it, Ethereum, how many Ether we need for this gas, book token contract, like where do you want to send our, sell, uh, send our PBLs, and user wallet, where the resulting book token will be credited or sent, so to speak. Because we are not just, you know, getting some $20 and shipping a package of shoes. So we're getting this $20 and from them we have to buy Ether, we have to buy PBL, we have to pay the fees. And then we also have to figure out where to send, kind of what is your address, the where you want your crypto asset. And what is the address of the product, so to speak, the book you want to buy. So some manipulations with the user creating a user, user transaction. So we also update the volume with each purchase. So we know that this user has already, like whatever, spent $150 this year for the books, but still limit not yet reached. Then user fiat wallet is credited with a currency and amount captured minus exchange fees. And then buy order is generated on this kind of under the hood exchange on behalf of the user for the PBL and Ether amounts communicated in the data package that we have calculated as necessary to buy uh, the desired book. Buy order is satisfied by the single trader Publica. Publica in this setup is selling the tokens. Exchange credits PBL and Ether wallet of the user. Exchange debits fiat wallet of the user. Exchange debits, PBL and Ether wallet of the of Publica because we have been selling these cryptocurrencies. And Charisma and uh, exchange credits, fiat wallet of Publica seller, of Publica who sold PBL tokens. And then exchange prepares and broadcasts to the Ethereum network transaction of sending PBL and using Ether for gas to the target book smart contract. 
Yeah, and now that the exchange will receive the book tokens, and then exchange need to send book tokens again to the user target wallet. So eventually, user target wallet receives book token and can actually read the book after all these manipulations. And publicly converts its funds in fiat wallet into BTC with the same exchange because they have this OTC trading and uses them to open PBL buy position in, for example, KuCoin. It has been written when uh, KuCoin was selected. So any other exchange. So the funds we have received uh, for selling PBL, we're just sending them to buy more PBL. Uh, technically, we hope, I mean, I mean, when we grow, exchanges will be much more easier, uh, then we can connect to your, so to speak, wallet. So we don't need to sell public PBLs as we are doing now, and some people notice the logs and like, oh, do they just sell their own tokens? Yeah, we sell our own tokens now when we're testing. We will also sell them when the speed fiat gateway is working. But uh, the proceedings will be used just to channel them to the exchange. And eventually, of course, we want to get, get rid of this in the middle position and connect directly to exchange. But to each exchange, we could do it. If we would spend time in integrating with KuCoin, and then they just tell us, bye, bye. The no breaks, right? So maybe we don't need to be dependent on the exchange right now. It looks like, like the fiat gateway is already working and it's going through internal testing. Please give an overview of the how this fiat gateway works. We'd like to know the architecture and different systems it's made <coughs> up of. Yeah, as explained, just uh, explained. Yeah, it's a CC bill as a capture. Then there is an exchange. Well, also they do not have any technical exchange, so they have just license. So we are we they are like exchange as a service, exchange license as a service. So we are building all this technology just on behalf of them. Yeah, then we have the system to calculate what is the amount we have to charge in dollars or euro or yuan. And then we are doing all the necessary steps to provide this user wallet with this PBL and Ether to be able to interact with a book smart contract and eventually receive the book token. Uh, what is the progress made on the legal side of the fiat gateway? Andrew Scandiweb, chief financial officer, is still working on creating a contract of public exchange and authors. Uh, Gibraltar legal team is working there very slowly something you haven't been working before. Uh, I'm also working on this contract. I don't think it's blocking us from anything. We still have our simple terms and conditions, but it's underway and eventually it will be done. <laughs> and, and Gianluca, will you ever come with a new roadmap? Are you afraid to commit to a schedule? Do you realize this makes you look unprofessional? Currently in December till mid end of January, yeah, we are setting up sidechain, researching progressive web app risks and using of React for e-reader, local storage, browser, offline storage, index, DB, whatever, and how it may be used for storage of private keys, security, storage of books, and so on. So I wouldn't, yes, uh, I am afraid, as I mentioned, yeah, I am afraid to commit to a schedule because I do not see enough confidence in committing to it, or schedule or what, launching of progressive web app, that hasn't been existing before. I mean, we did some unique things. There has not been any e-reader coupled with wallet. We have done it. Uh, there have not been any book contracts or, 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 or DRM based on tokens. We have done it, but uh, if we do, what do you do? Yeah, there will be, okay, publicly doing something and some speculations or maybe uh, yeah, token price maybe go and then it's three days till your commitment. Um, so I think we we uh, update on the kind of the segment of roadmap we are working towards, right? So that was the beginning in the AMA. And then we just update what could be the next steps. And once we will have clear development plan, of course, we'll publish it. But currently, we're at the crossroads. Yeah.
Since fiat gateway is underway, what are the next steps from a technical point of view? As explained in the very beginning, it's progressive web up and searching. Also, do you expect a high amount of book ICO starting right after the fiat gateway will become available? Do you think something is still missing in order to properly start with book ICO? What is your vision for the next six, nine months? Well, generally, fiat gateway alone will not solve it as such. It's one of the components of adoption chance opportunity. Uh, sidechain, freak blockchain will potentially open the gate for more users. Fiat gateway will make it easier anyway. Much more easier. Uh, we do not expect anything. We expect that if we launch Fiat Gate when it works, then we'll have higher kind of probability, or higher propensity, higher percentage of authors we are talking to launching their book ICOs because they understand, okay, yeah, now my simple guys and girls uh, can actually buy my tokens even without knowing that they're buying tokens. But still, only in Android app, for example. Because we are gateway, we would work in Apple. They are working for the external thing, things. And for web, it's kind of too cumbersome. They have to pay somewhere the, their public key for the tokens to be sent. So that's why we work with this progressive web. So Fiat Gateway makes it better, substantially better. But it's not that kind of, well, you know, we have a lot of people. Taking very conservative best and worst case scenario, what would be your estimate public uh, 2009 sales to be? Uh, from $100 to $5 million. Could you name us one by one the prizes won by public and give a short description of these this prizes? Many times we hear some winnings, but it's hard to understand how big the deal is. Alexander will answer it in Telegram after the AM. No one talks about public and creative community. How do you plan to get more exposure? Telegram users are leaving and Living is a public good channel. The only people who is active there are community managers. Having people talk for free is not easy. Having people talk for money is beyond public a hard cap and current resourcing. I think we have to we have got way more mentions and articles for free or for pay than an average ICO project already. We have got relevant prices. We got a lot of relevant mentions. Many articles have been writing, many articles have been writing about us without us even knowing about it and paying for like whatever many hundred blockchain projects to watch it and, and so on. So uh, just, just, just how to say, no one talks about public and crypto community. Yeah, so it's, it's, we are joking, it's pretty easy to, 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 to have people start talking about us. We just uh, close Telegram group, close the site, and you know, then people will definitely talk a little bit about public. But uh, to have talking for money is not really helping us, okay? People come, check, yeah, it's Ethereum, it's, yeah, it's one of the centralized steps, not scalable, okay? but they still have a lot of funds for marketing, apparently. So what do we want? We want to launch these things that will help us to be newsworthy, and then people hopefully will talk about it, because it also will be one of a kind. <laughs> about partnerships, could you tell which one is active and running? What is the advantages of them? Uh, my favorite uh, partnership is with Morgan James. Uh, they're like, you know, like real publishers, one big five. But they have a startup mindset. They have best-selling authors, and they want to use public model in a kind of getting them up to date with the modern technologies and possibilities of kind of peer-to-peer -peer interaction between readers and authors. And we have a pilot with them. They have better put symbolic amount, so they got it. So hopefully they will have an, uh, the next one with us really soon. The ones they have is with exclusivity. So the guys who buy the books at public will get it a month earlier than anybody else. <laughs> New exchanges. I mean, the centralized exchange is fine, but we are not really working towards any new exchanges. We don't have any volume. We, don't, we cannot tell, hey, onboard us. There will be some volume. Like, why? If it hasn't been really. And like, what are the news? What are the kind of organic usage of, of the project, now it's bound to Ethereum, Fiat, and uh, Apple Store policies. 
And there is no budget just to pay whatever fees I tell, like, okay, pay us two and a half million and we'll list you on Binance. We, 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 we paid it for Cryptopia. We had a deal with uh, Coin, so it worked, but uh, we, we don't have any uh, exchanges scheduled in the near future. Also, I'd like to ask you if you're going to need an exchange in order to provide your service. Yeah, if you mean this fiat, we have an exchange as a service for fiat PBL gateway. Uh, once the fiat gateway is implemented, would it be possible to add other purchasing options like using other cryptocurrency for purchasing PBLs in the public platform? Yes, but, like, but why? I mean, those who have crypto, they can buy PBL somehow already, even in, even in Cryptopia or whatever, any decentralized exchange. And, and, I, and I think like the biggest goal is to allow fiat guys to, to use the platform. Really. It was suggested by a commenter in the public telegram that it might be more unique and better to change book ICO to simply IBO, initial book offering. What do you think about this idea? I do not mind, but it will not change anything currently in how people are buying books or doing book ICO. So maybe we change it, maybe we not. We also had this IBO concept, but like, we don't feel it's really like a major thing to to invest time and funds. <laughs> Where they buy the PBL? Locks of trade? Or are they just selling their own team PBLs and not buying them on the market? So probably that's about Fiat Gateway. Yes, currently we are buying our, our own PBL for testing and for, for first launch. Uh, where else we can buy them? But the proceedings, they will be sent to the exchange. Eventually we connect it to the exchange and we just buy the best the best offer out there, then the next best offer out there, and then the next next. Um, and so when new traders come, they see, oh, okay, there is no, not any more cheap prices. Okay, so why we put low price? We just put the current one, and current one is already was kind of four time higher than the first best. Um, <laughs> Yeah, as you see in the diagram, we will send proceedings to the exchange to get more PBL ourselves. Uh, I thought about a few more questions. Here it goes. I like the logo and the slogan in public, but can't find the t-shirts online. We don't have t-shirts online, merch store. Yeah, we do not want to divert our offers to the merch store. Uh, if somebody wants to have public a t-shirt, you have public a logo on our website in the press room. Just do it. Just upload to any of your original, you know, click to print sites. Uh, do you guys own the book tokenization patent? Have you thought about tokenizing and securing patents for other written forms? Other books and so on? We don't have patent, and we never plan to have one. We rather plan to have like an early mover advantage and. Uh, if we would pursue it, probably we wouldn't even finish our platform. It takes a lot of efforts and software patents are, reason, are recently very reluctant for granted. And we do not really invent new technology. It's a new, and it's a new use case. The question isn't related to Zama, but could you find out why admins for the Telegram group restricted me from writing? You submitted this question with username that is already active, so we couldn't unblock you even if you wanted to. What kind of questions we got in Telegram chat? Mm, actually, just comments on, about Fiat Gateway. I didn't understand if you are close to tech release or not. Yeah, it's released. It's it's released, but it it, uh, it still has its uh, deficiencies. We, I think we just have the kind of highest security risk grade. So you have to set up all your country address correctly for transactions to, to pass through. So it's, it's a bit annoying. But uh, you'll, you'll see more and more uh, book ICOs with Fiat gateway option. All about the Good to go. About expenses, this chart, just why there's changing millions, then thousands, then millions. 
Yeah, the, why it used to be like three million? It has been three million because okay, yo, we got Ether and Bitcoin. We didn't spend it; it was on the wall. So when Ether goes up, the value of your wallet goes up, and eventually it's three million. But how? I mean, our expenses are generally in fiat, right? It's a marketing, design, and development. So we had to move it into fiat. What are the options? Uh, move to exchange and then exchange there okay you would have three million and then how we can send money from exchange to our suppliers no way so we have to send to us our banks or like european banks in general they would bounce it back best case scenario they would freeze it worst case scenario without any possibility to unfreeze or you have to provide aml on everybody we have a KYC coverage, and it's on the. We did also wallet checkup. All the wallets are safe, no bad traces to them. KYC is also okay. We don't have any suspicious guys there. Uh, so we did well, even so we did it when general ICO were not KYC compliant. But for bank, all the crypto is no, 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 no. And yes, there are some expensive solutions in Gibraltar, maybe in Switzerland or Mongolia. Uh, the risks. You move money to Switzerland, bank says, yes, good. You pay for supplier seconds, then they tell, we freeze your money. True story of some I see. So we have been really waiting for the case we can trust. And we found it. And we found a way to uh, compliantly move our crypto funds to to the place where we can kind of on demand convert them to fiat and move. But when we did it, Bitcoin was already at I think nine thousand, and we were storing money in Bitcoin. But uh, if we would uh, how to say fix our position. Yeah, we would, it wouldn't like change anything really dramatically for us. And we would have like an extra 100,000, so to speak. No, not a depth of 200,000, but, uh, but I think we are just like you are also somehow stick to crypto and uh, we still have 30 Bitcoin there on, on the account. And, uh, and, and we had this advantage. I mean, we wouldn't be able to pay anybody but we had this advantage that co-founder of public is can do it, so we could uh, finance all the salaries, whatever rent, up. no, rent you just use our own office, on-demand designers and so on, without the need of kind of paying. Uh, so we could always pay later. And uh, yeah, currently we cannot pay, but it doesn't bother us can do it so much. Because everybody likes public and the project and the potential future. Good. No more questions. So, at least on this counter, I see zero people. So, at least thank you for those who came earlier, who have listened, who are in the community, and those who will watch it later. Ask more questions. We'll schedule another MA. Bye, guys.